Hi, my name is Sophie Shiskelista. I'm a first year student in international relations at LSE. Hi, my name is Andrew Rajanathan. I'm a master student here at the LSE. And, and together, together we're on a mission. mission. It's all about this, the St. Philip's building on the edge of the LSE campus in central London. They're going to knock it down and replace it with a brand new building. So before they start, we decided to take a look at what they're up to. This new building is going to be the new student centre. Right, and these students are actually working um, with the architect. It's probably going to be one of the best in the world. And that's quite a challenge. It's a shame to lose a very old building that might have been part of LSD for decades, but it's not very practical right now, is it? Right, the corridors are really small, so if lots of students were walking around, we'd probably be like in traffic jams. Yeah, it's quite dark, dingy. I can see now why they want to change it. Having decided the building had to go, we wanted to find out why a new student centre was necessary. And the best place to start was with the Students' Union and SU General Secretary, Alad Fisher. People have noted over the years that the facilities on campus aren't perhaps as um, wonderful as they could be. So what we always hear from our societies is that they need bigger and better facilities to expand, to develop. The ambition just grows for societies. They want to do bigger events, more ambitious events on a bigger scale at all times. So I think that will just continue to grow in the future and our facilities have to keep up with that. One of the things that LSE is known for is having the most active student body possibly in the world and um, having hundreds of societies, sports clubs, the media group um, and a really active political uh, debate on campus at all times. So I think having this new student centre with improved facilities, bigger facilities for those activities will only show that LSE is committed to the student experience and providing the best for its students. Academic work at LSE can be pretty intense and the gym is one place where students go to chill out and keep fit. But the demand has outgrown the facilities and the gym is desperate for more space. It can get pretty busy in peak hours, till like Friday afternoon when everyone's knocked off lectures, and everyone wants to go and have a quick session and it can get a bit cramped, a little bit hot. The new gym is going to have bigger space, yoga classes, uh, dance studios. What do you think this is going to be like for new students? Um, yoga classes at the moment are like in a basement somewhere underneath the old building which isn't really very pleasant. Like last year I lived with five girls and three of them were like very keen on their dancing, but I know they had to travel all over London to go to dance classes to keep that hobby up. So having something like that, those facilities on campus would be great for people who are like into dancing and yoga and things like that. The gym is a nice place to meet people. Do you think it's really important in student life? Um, definitely important in student life. Just because LSE is a, a top academic institution, it shouldn't sort of automatically not qualify for sort of top sporting facilities, really. LSC has a vast array of student societies, and some of them currently have facilities in the old East Building. The student newspaper, The Beaver, has plenty of equipment, but very little space. Right, that was I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day by Wizard. Pulse Radio is a vibrant mix of interviews, chat and music. The station broadcasts throughout the day, six days a week. But the studio facilities are cramped and uncomfortable. Loose TV has much the same problem. The current facilities we've got at Loose TV, they're kind of slightly inadequate, I'd say, at the moment. How do you think the new student building is going to help you? Um, well, hopefully the new student building will be like a really fantastic resource for all of the media group. At the moment, we're all kind of crammed into one very small corridor and we don't really have the room we need to be able to uh, undertake the projects we're hoping to do. We're getting an editing room. That's going to be an amazing resource to be able to draw upon. If you can't edit properly, you're not going to be able to produce professional production. So having a, a kind of professional-style production room will be really good, and I think that would really take the society forwards in the future. So what did you make of this morning? I thought it was really interesting. They were all very excited about the building. Um, I think it's a really good idea as well because it's a way of getting maybe a certain cohesion between the students. So you get to meet people from other classes. It's going to be a lot of crossover for meeting people and unless you're taking that, that aspect of student life very, very seriously. You can meet some new people um, in a dance class just chilling. So do you want to go and see what this new building is going to look like? Yeah, let's go. We 
we've been invited to meet Dublin-based award-winning architects Sheila O'Donnell and John Toomey. John and Sheila agreed to meet us in the basement room in the very building they're about to transform. This looks absolutely amazing. Could you tell us a bit more about it? Maybe the way to start is to talk to you about how we started with the site, which is a fantastically congested little campus where the streets are really part the concourse of the university. So we made this little object, which is the framework of the rules that govern the site. So anything that you do on the site has to be able to fit into that. But we didn't want the building to actually look like this. We wanted a free building. So our building is free inside in this cage, but the cage is gone. When we started drawing the site, you can see that all the roots converge. It's a, it's a kind of convergent kind of knuckle point in the middle of the campus. So we began to think, how would you make a sort of clubhouse at the convergence of these roots? Maybe it should begin to climb up out of these roots as if the streets themselves run up through the building. When it sits on the site, it feels like it has responded to all of the directions that people can approach it from. The building is drawing you in. And in a way then you work with it with your hands until we feel that the form just feels right in the hand and right to the eye. We were also thinking about the materials and very much about the view that a person walking along the street would have of the building. We were conscious from the beginning that the building would be viewed through little narrow streets and laneways that form the campus here in LSE. So you can see here how the brick wall almost leans in and starts a kind of form conversation with the big canopy over the entrance. So as you approach down the lane and get closer to the building, the main entrance to the building has an outdoor space which has this big glass canopy over it. In some places there are gaps in the brickwork. Every second brick is missing so daylight can come through and at night the light would glow through this uh, perforated brick making the whole building like a kind of lantern. You come in the main entrance here, the student union reception is there. The bottom of the stairs is very wide and it's a mixture of a staircase and a kind of seated, almost like a little amphitheatre. People can sit on the steps or collect and have meetings. So as you move up, this stairs winds its way around the lift shaft, which is here, and where possible we have landings like this one, which look back out into the entry canopy so you can see people arriving, or the seats where you can sit and chat or work with your friends on computers. And then at the top of the building, which this drawing shows, there are, there's a roof terrace and a roof garden at the very top. And that roof garden will be planted with trees and the little this is cafe and juice bar at the top level, which opens out onto the roof gardens. You can see that here in the model, where public space on the ground floor, where everyone is collecting under that canopy. The stairs climbs up and is a new social space for the campus. And then at the top, there's a resort on the roof, but the idea is that the public space from the street runs right up through and ends in the garden. I assume you usually work with older people. How was the experience of actually working with students? We found that kind of stimulating. Yeah, and I think it was, we really enjoyed the fact that we were meeting student union people from the beginning. Students are very interested in the long-term sustainability and energy consumption of the building. So we had a lot of conversations about energy too. A one-stop shop for students creates a massive opportunity for many of the LSE departments who currently serve the student population. The Careers Library will move from its existing cramped offices into a purpose-built suite. Well, I think it's going to be a really lovely place for students to be, um, a nice place to come and do your careers research, a nice place to come and meet with careers advisors. Do you think it's going to be a nice place to meet the employers? Absolutely. LSE students are very heavily targeted by employers. Employers are very keen to meet them. This will give us great space for them to meet formally, one-to-one, -one, and to meet more informally in little receptions we can run in, in the cafe area. Student residences will have their own state-of-the-art facilities. We used to work more closely with the SU, we used to be co-located with them in the East Building and I think it's, it's quite an exciting opportunity for us I think to get back to maybe where our roots are which is in student advice and talking through student problems on a more one-to-one -one basis. LSE has a student population of more than 140 nationalities so the creation of a multi-faith prayer room is something that is long overdue. The LSE produces students who go on to middle and upper management in law, economics, politics and actually you know a friendship made between a Jewish student here and a Muslim student there 
might actually contribute to something decisive in the future. That's my big hope. I think it's a fantastic move from the school, investing in the students. By getting this new uh, building, we'll be able to cater for the students' needs in a much better way than we currently are. It's going to be a big step forward for, for LSE. The LSE is, is committing £35.5 million to develop this project. In terms of priority, it is priority one for the school. In terms of the capital development plan, it is the next, it is the next stepping stone. What it shows is that LSE is committed to the student experience, is committed to excellent student facilities. We want a world-class building, the best in the UK, uh, and we've set some very high environmental standards for this building. Um, you know, I see this as an absolute career highlight, um, and it's going to be very hard to top this building. That's been all very interesting. It has. I think it's a really good idea because it's a way of putting all the students together in one own building in this really nice, friendly atmosphere. So the next generation of LSE students are going to have more things to do, more ways of engaging with, the, with each other and more ways of meeting people, essentially. It would bring really people together. Uh, it's really nice.